Hi there guys and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to take a moment and talk about my high voltage balls. We're going to build an electrostatic pendulum and it's going to be pretty cool. Check this out. This is what you'll need. So, so far we've learned the basics of a neon sign transformer and you're at that stage where you want to do something with it. You know, you're, you're, you're drawing arcs and you're grounding stuff out and you probably burnt up half a dozen GI Joe guys or Lego dudes, whatever you've got, but let's make it do something. So you take your high voltage power supply, your neon sign transformer, a couple small electrodes. These are, and I'll put a link to these in the description. These are just hollow metal shiny balls that you can get on Amazon. I don't really know what people do with them. These are not solid ball bearings. You can buy solid ball bearings in these sizes. I looked at it and they're stupid expensive. So we're going cheap because they don't need to be solid for this. This ball is a, a bigger one. Uh, I think this is like a four inch. You'll need a bit of bare copper wire, not magnet wire. Um, and I'll put details and sizes in the description. And you'll need some GTO wire, which we've already talked about because this is your, your much more safer high voltage lead, okay? And you'll need some kind of stand. I have used all kinds of random household objects for this over the years. In this particular instance, I'm using uh, fake brass craptacular candle holders. They're garbage, but it'll hold a candle. And more importantly, they'll hold the balls. So that gives you ground electrodes and your main electrode and your set because you need three for this. It will work with just two, but it won't work as well. And it doesn't look nearly as cool. So I do it like this because this is just, this is how you do. You can do this with pop cans. In fact, the first one of these I ever made used a pop can as the center electrode and the two outer ones, I think we started out with pop cans and we worked our way up to, I think it was pop cans with a hard drive platen on top. This is back in like 1998 is when we built the first one of these. We did it with a furnace ignition transformer, 10 kilovolts, 23 milliamps, and it ran for days. Like it ran nonstop for days and we didn't have any problems with it at all. Just be careful, be safe. The, if you have like a cat or something like that, this isn't a thing to leave around unattended or anything like that. Just common sense safety applies. So let's cover a couple basics. You connect your GTO safety wire to some kind of stand. For here, I have an insulator bolted to the, the lighting rig down here. From there, you connect just a piece of bare copper wire and then drill a couple holes in your ball and put the ball on there, tie it together, you're set. That's your, that's your actual pendulum and it's easy and it's safe and it's repeatable. And everything here is very light. Like the ball is made of aluminum. It's like chrome plated, but it's just a hollow aluminum sphere. And the, you know, the wire is super thin. This is like a 22 gauge wire and it's, it's super light and airy and simple. The longer you make it, the higher you make the pendulum, the longer it will take to oscillate from one side to the other. But that's, that's a physics thing. So in doing this, you're going to need your ground side. And to do that, the big thing here, now there's, there's a million ways you can do this. This is just how I did it. Um, I went with the candle holders because they have a very thick base. Okay, that's like a quarter inch thick. And that let me drill and tap the metal base and put a bolt in it so I can put a ring terminal on it. And I like bolt and ring terminal connections because they're mechanically and electrically very good and solid, but it's also easy to change and experiment. For the wire, we talked earlier about THHN wire. Don't use that for the ground leads on this. You want soft and floppy. The, if you use THHN, it's gonna be too rigid. And it's gonna be a pain in the butt and it's gonna be sticking up and just, you'll get problems. Go with nice, cheap silicone wire. I'll put a link in the description so you can find good stuff and connect those to the ground on your neon sign transformer. So this connects to one side of the hot, not both. If you connect both together, you won't get anything out of it. You'll just short out the transformer because as we talked about, those are out of phase with each other by 180 degrees. So if you just connect them together, you're just shorting out your transformer and it's gonna make grumpy noises and you'll let the magic smoke out of it. You only need one side. 
So this is actually working. I have a 12,000 volt neon sign transformer. So this is 6,000 volts. We're working on one side of that. And that's plenty. This is plenty of power for this. I do not recommend doing this with a neon, with their, uh, a microwave oven transformer. The voltage is way low, the current is crazy high, and they are very much not designed to run for long periods of time at full output power. They don't like it, they get really hot, you let the smoke out, and it doesn't, it doesn't work as well. So get a neon sign transformer for this, or you could get super experimental and scratch, like if you're having a lot of trouble getting a neon sign transformer, you can get small high voltage power supplies on Amazon or even scrounge them up in places like old laser printers and things like that. Um, Xerox machines and laser printers use the zero graphic process and that it's all based on electrostatics. So they have a small high voltage power supply in them that is absolutely enough to do this with like a pop can and stuff. Go dig in, experiment, see what you can find. Also, experiment with maybe having this be insulated, and if you're going DC, one of these being positive and one of these being negative, or one being uh, at high voltage and one being grounded, and this just being insulated. See what happens. This is, you could do a lot here, and the mechanism in which it works is different depending on if it's AC or DC and how things are configured. There's like, 10 different ways that this will work, and a million it won't. Um, <laughs> you'll figure it out. But experiment, try it with the DC power supply, see what you get. You don't have to use an neon sign transformer, just don't use a microwave oven transformer. If you can, and I haven't talked about these at all in, in the whole series yet because I'm, I'm working my way up to it, I want you to scrounge up one of these. Preferably exactly this one. This is the, the Variac Auto Transformer from the General Radio Company, and the model is, or type, is um, W5MT3. Okay? So see if you can find that particular model, W5MT3. This is a very small, this is only if you're in the States, if you're in, you know, another part of the world, it won't work as well because you're going to probably have 240 power, or you'll have 240 power at 50 hertz and things are different. But in America, oh, this will work at 50 cycles, so cool, but this is only good up to 140 volts. But what this is, is a variable auto transformer made by a company you can trust. You can get cheap Chinese Variacs. They sell them. They're garbage. At this level, it's probably not that big a deal, and if it's all you can get, go for it. But if you can, you're probably gonna have to go scrounging on eBay, or garage sale it, or ham festivals are full of them, um, but you want a basic Variac. There's two different companies in America that make them. They're both excellent, high quality, but you just need a little one, okay? This is five amps. And this one is my favorite for basic bench use. I really like this one because it's totally enclosed. It plugs in the wall. You don't have to hardwire anything. It's got a basic socket on top. It gives you a main on and off, and it gives you a built-in thermal reset push button safety breaker. And this is exactly what you want if you're at this stage. This lets you do a lot, a lot of things a lot more safely. Um, because right now the only way you have, to, you have to turn this on and off is just plug it in or unplug it, which is fine, but it's not as safe as it could be, and it's kind of hard on the gear, and it, it's, it only gives you on and off. You've got a binary system. It's either on at full power or completely off. With the Variac, it'll let you ramp things up slowly. It gives you a big volume knob, which is exactly what you want at this stage. So I haven't talked about him yet. I'm gonna, I'm doing a deep dive on Variax. We're gonna, we're gonna play with everything from this little itty bitty one up to, I have a Variac at the opposite end of the spectrum that is taller than I am and can only be moved with a forklift. It literally weighs more than a ton. And we will play with that and it'll be fun, it'll be cool. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I can't play with it in the basement because I can't bring it down the stairs. So yeah, it would fall through the floor of the house. It's heavy. For you, right now, see if you can find a W5 MT3. I'm not selling them, I'm not making any money on this. I just want you to have the right stuff. So go out, scrounge it, find them on eBay. Um, if you find somebody who has a pile of them, they're selling cheap or something like that, put the link in my Discord. Let's share it with the world. We're here to teach. So. 
that's the basics. Probably by now you probably want to see this actually do something, don't you? Okay, here you go. And if you like that, there's a much longer format of that over, I because I knew people would want to, some, some people just want to watch the pretty arts. Okay, cool. Check out my other channel. I have a channel that is just long format, very chill videos specifically to help people with autism and anxiety. But a lot of the content there is just really cool to check out and watch. So go, links in description, go over to the Atmosphere Project. I'll put a link directly to a much longer format of that video so that you can just be like, yeah, that's cool, man. he's got arcs, that's neat, okay. Um, because some people just wanna watch the blinking lights and the sparkity spark spark parts. I can respect that, there's nothing wrong with that. There is one thing I won't do for you. I'm not gonna teach you how it works. This is the only video in the whole high voltage series so far where I'm not, I'll teach you how to build it, I'll teach you the parts you need, I'll teach you how to do it safely. I'm not gonna teach you how it works because I want you to teach me. I want you, in your words, and it could be in a, just in a comment, it could be in a video, you could post it in the Discord, you, any way you want, whatever works for you. Teach me how this works. Because depending on how you hook it up and what your power supply is and what wires go where, the answer is different, and they're all fascinating. They're all interesting, but the thing that's really fascinating to me is you learning stuff. That's why I do this, is so that you can learn something new. So I want you to teach me. How does it work? I taught you how to build it. I taught you how to handle it safely. I taught you all the parts you'll need and even some extra fun stuff. You teach me how your version works. I don't want some general, you know, guy with an electrical engineering degree or a college physicist or something like that. No, 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 no. I know how it works. It's okay. It's not my first time. If you've built one of these, if you've actually done it, I want to know how yours works with your wiring and your power supply. Teach me what you can teach me from what you learned. I want to know how your project works. I want to see you building cool stuff. I want you to grow and learn and not just do it, but be able to teach it. You teach me for once. It's about time. I've been, you know, making about 3,000 of these videos. I think you can do one for me. Teach me how yours works. The links to everything are in the description for the Discord and all that jazz. Yeah, I'm easy to get in a hold of. I'm easy to find. Show me what you got. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, demanding evidence, and learning new stuff. I'm Chris Bowden. You have fun. I'll see you next time.